it going, folks? I'm Matt, this is Photosyntech. Welcome to another episode of The Growth Show, and it's really bright in here, okay. As you saw off the start, I got this really kick-ass new um, LED light. Uh, it looks like a neon light, but it's actually LEDs. Uh, and this is from the community, this is a gift. Uh, we talked about this in previous uh, streams, but again, if you're not familiar, um, the, the community did something really nice for me. Uh, so thank you guys, I absolutely appreciate the hell out of you. Um, it's just really bright because I don't have the dimmer set up for it yet, so that's why I'm not turning it on right now. However, Updates. So lots been going on uh, in the last couple weeks. Um, I want to talk about thrips. I want to talk about the hash run, uh, the Angio, the upcoming one nug run, uh, the Mars uh, stuff, and um, there's there's a new show you guys want to watch. So going down the list, and then we're gonna go look at some uh, plants and uh, whatnot. So thrips. Um, Ideally, I've eradicated the thrips in the flower room. Ideally, I've eradicated the thrips in the veg room. Um, I did a fog. I talked about this uh, recently. I brought everything into the flower room and I did a pyrethrum fog. Um, that was basically with some plants that were a couple weeks into flower, so they had no problem being fogged. Everything else was in veg, and that basically kills everything above the soil. There's still life in the soil, it's fine. Um, thrips, have they been eradicated? We'll see. I've uh, I uh, also brought in some uh, predators, so I deployed those a couple days ago. So we did a big fog. Uh, three days later, we brought in the predators, and we're going to continue treating normal IPM methods, um, just like I still have thrips. So that's that's the thing. We're, we're fighting those guys, um, or at least hopefully we've we've killed them off. Um, hash. So last weekend, uh, I spent the entire Saturday making hash. There's just a little clip. Um, set things up out of my deck. Of course, I live in Canada, uh, Western Canada. Here last weekend, it was. Just Sitting just above freezing, so I was able to spend the entire day just running the washer, uh, made a ton of hash, really, really stoked about that. Uh, I'm going to be pressing that um, into just um, hash pucks, bricks, whatever, uh, probably this evening. So uh, maybe look to the Instagram if you want to see some updates on that. The all natural grow off. Ah, nuts. I, I, I unfortunately ran into a problem with my plant um, showing some intersex traits. Now, this doesn't speak at all against Wildwood. Um, intersex traits can happen in even the strongest of genetics. There's a small percentage chance that they will just happen. No matter what, uh, no stress or nothing, even if it's um, some of the best cultivars out there. So I unfortunately ended up culling my plant. Uh, everybody else has looked at theirs. Nobody else has found any issues, no concerns. The other control plant that I'm running, um, and I'll show you guys when I go outside to show you the flower room there, uh, is doing magnificent. But unfortunately, as healthy as my all-natural grow-off plant was going, uh, I had to cut it down because uh, we, we just <laughs> we don't play with boys out in the flower room. Um, the One Nug Run, Season 2. So if you guys are part of the community, if you're part of the Discord last year, of course, we did the One Nug Run, where the idea was you have three months to grow the single biggest nug that you can on a plant and uh, show it off to everybody and see what happens. We've got some pretty specific rules on measurements and whatnot and how to make this happen. So this is going to be kicking off here January 1st. If you're not a member of my Discord, links down below. I encourage you to come join the community. Ton of fun over there. Always good times. And of course, there'll be some cool prizes for the One Nug Run. Now, um, Mars, Mars Hydro, sponsor of the channel. Mars Hydro Tent right here behind me. Um, guys, Black Friday sales coming. So uh, check it out. Um, they've got all sorts of cool sales. Um, get out there, get your Mars Hydro gear, get your tents, get your lights, get your fans. Uh, they've even got some new clone stuff that uh, I haven't had a chance to play with, um, but definitely looking uh, forward to that. As well as uh, they've got a new uh, power pack there for doing some, some interesting control stuff too and monitoring. So again, haven't had a chance to play with that. Mars, you need to send me some stuff and uh, we can show you uh, to the community here. Now the last thing that I want to touch on of course before we get into showing plants Tacos and Tokes, Tim and Tanya dropped a new episode this week. I'm going to pop a link up there in the corner. Uh, of course, my good friend Tim of Tim's Crab Shack fame uh, joins me all the time on live streams. Him and his girl, uh, Tanya, they do a fantastic little review show there. So I highly encourage you to go check that out. Uh, each uh, week or every other week, I believe, right now, they're trying to drop episodes. And uh, this one was a banger because they grew one of my strains and tested that out. And that was the Apple Cup. So uh, I encourage you to check that out. But why don't we go take a look at the flowers? See what's going on in the veg and all those other spaces because cats starting to yell at me. So let's let's do that now. 
And here we are in the veg tent. Of course, uh, Cheddar in here inspecting the things, Mr. Cheese. Uh, let me know if you see anything out of sorts. So, uh, what's going on in here? Well, over here we got a couple little things. I had spinach going, uh, but it bolted. So, uh, we're going to try something new there. Of course, LSS logo on the back. If you're not uh, familiar with Living Soil Society, uh, I'll just throw a link up there. Uh, Tim and I, we just uh, announced that we're kind of getting back at it and doing some fun stuff. And of course, Tim, Timothy's Crab Shack fan, we were just talking about that. Uh, that's his crabby kush right there. She is such a potassium hungry lady. Um, that's what's going on with the yellowing there. I just got a little bit behind my potassium boosting. Uh, otherwise, we've got like the do -si dough, the turt mints, uh, the grapele. Right, the Turt Mint's number one cut uh, has been renamed as Grapel because it's such a purpley, grapey strain, and Cheddar goes running out of the space there. But uh, you no, know, guys, things are going really good here. Uh, we're under the FC 3000. This thing's sitting about five feet high right now, and uh, I've got to run about 75% uh, just because it seems to be where the plants are happy. You know, here's the carnivorous shelf, of course. I got a little vanilla vine, uh, my Venus flytrap, my pitcher plant that I almost killed. That's why you see all those little things chopped, but she's coming back. And of course, my other pitcher plant, and look at this. Super cool. Uh, carnivorous plants, love them. Things are good. So, uh, veg tent, rocking. Um, why don't we go outside though and take a look at the flower room because there's some funkiness going on out there. Let's check that out. And we'll start off over here, over the three by three, which is looking really empty. So I had the papaya fi in here, uh, that in-house stuff, and um, I took it down on day 50. Why? Because I was treating this space for thrips. Um, is it gonna be the best it can be? Nope. Uh, is it going to be valid enough for me to check and see what plant I want to keep out of those six? Yeah, it should be good. If not, I'll run them again. Uh, but that's that's what's going on here. And I am planning on washing those papaya fias, um, at least the, the lowers. I'm going to just save the tops and get the lowers. But those have got another week to dry. Um, otherwise, of course, the, uh, well, this this is where the ANGO was, but I've also since chopped that down as I was talking about. Uh, intersex happens. That's why it's it's super important to always be heavily inspecting your plants um, in flower. Once you get in about that second to third week, uh, you, you really want to take a look. So these guys, uh, of course, we got the FCE 4800 over the 3x3 space. Beast of a light. Uh, and... I don't normally have those paper towels sitting up there. Those shouldn't be sitting up there. Those aren't actually supposed to be doing that. Anyway, um, Beast of the Light and the TS-1000. But this space, I don't know. I might be doing some changes. I'm thinking of some tweaking and whatnot. Anyway, let's uh, see what's going under here under the FCE-8000. Um, right now, I'm just running this guy on two bars because I just flipped these PKB remixes. These plants are exceptionally tall. And I actually ran into a minor issue when I flipped them with the blue mats. What? Yeah, this is an interesting one. So when I brought these three in, and these have been in flower now for about five days, um, these these things are all literally, um, you know, if I come down here, they're, they're planted down to about this point because they were so tall, um, and I knew I was gonna potentially get some stretch. These are also PKB remixes here. Um, this one, like just, Look how much it stretched over the other two. Like these two barely stretch. So, and I have a feeling this one's gonna do the same. So I planted those down really deep. Come in here about two days later and notice the one on the left looking really wilted, like it had been almost overwatered. Now, uh, looking back, of course, I recently ran into some issues where I killed off a couple plants by overwatering the bed, threw a screw up that was my own fault, and I thought the same thing was happening. But what I didn't take into consideration was because I had taken and planted these plants so far down that the blue mats, which would normally drip, 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 and get the stuff in this root zone where it would be right here, they weren't getting down as far. So what I've actually had to do is increase the um, drips on the blue mats just to get down there. And of course you can see things are looking happy, things are looking healthy. These PKB remixes, hopefully thrip free, um, should be uh, starting to throw, uh, well, pistols and stuff here real soon. Actually I can even see just a few on these. So very pleased. And now this guy of course over here in the corner, um, this is my ANGO control plant, just growing in a five gallon sip, which I've recently shown you guys how to make. Um, this is, as we've learned, uh, well, let's go over the hints for what the uh, ANGO plants are again. Um, super hype cuts uh, from some very top breeders. Um, they both share the same last word, which was guessed as breath last time. Norma G, shout out to you. And this is the final, cl uh, final clue. Um, each strain has three names, guys. So three names, uh, ends in breath. Um, if you can't figure it out from that, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't be growing. No, I'm just joking. I know we're not all strain aficionados. 
that's what's going on here this week. Uh, we'll see this one growing. This one's going. Next week, we're going to have uh, the Turt Mints, the Grey Pool, uh, Krabby Kush, and Apple Cup coming into this space. And I think we're going to do a little uh, Blackberry Kush up in here. Otherwise, I am Matt. This is Photosyntech. Thank you so much for joining us. We out. Shoo.